Always practice like you want to perform. Today, we're talking about what that statement gets right, what that statement gets wrong, and a better way to bridge the gap between what we do in the practice room and what we do in the performance space. What's up, everyone? Today, we're digging into something that's a little more conceptual in nature compared to what we normally cover. I really like to keep things here on the channel super practical, super pragmatic, like the licks you want to practice, the scales, the arpeggios, the tunes you want to learn. But this week, we got to get into something that is a little bit farther afield from those things, because it's not only important what we practice, but actually how we go about practicing if we want to improve in the best way possible. So let's get in to why I think this statement is not wholly accurate for us as improvisers. I think the problem with this, there's two things. The first is that most of us, I think, tend to get it backwards. We sort of flip it. Rather than our practices feeling like performances and feeling at that quality, instead our performances end up sounding like practices. So what do I mean by that? All the things that we're working on, both good and bad, tend to come out on the bandstand. Maybe we don't edit ourselves. We don't try to synthesize ideas. We just sort of try to run all the stuff that we have been working. I think this is particularly true when we're going through the phase of playing where we just start to get our change playing together and we can really start to play bebop. When we play, everything we play is eighth note lines. Everything is licks because that's what we've been spending all of our time on. The second reason I think that this sort of mindset of that every practice session should feel like a performance is problematic is because I'm actually of the opinion that you need to give yourself some space to suck at something in order to improve. Most of us, when we go to performance, we don't want to suck. And so if we put ourselves in this mindset that we have to be practicing at a performance level all of the time, we sort of disconnect ourselves with that process. We don't have that space to be creative, try new things. Try things that maybe we can't do. Also, maybe try things that we need to slow way down in order to do them well. That's not necessarily what happens in performance. I know for me, when I go to performing, I like to feel a little more confident with my ideas. Some performers are a little more comfortable with kind of like showing the process to the audience, kind of showing how the sausage is made, so to speak. I'm not one of those type of people. I like to feel confident in the ideas that I'm going to play. So I need that sort of safe space when I'm practicing where I can be bad, make mistakes, practice things slow, practice things a lot before they feel sort of fully developed. And I know I can use them as a performer. So that's a few of the negative sides of this thought process. What about some of the positive sides? People like to say this because there is definitely some truth to this statement. It gets us focusing on actually the things that hopefully matter if applied in the right way. Tone, time, musicality, synthesizing ideas, editing ourselves, if we can get those things happening in the practice room, we're going to be much more ready to access them when we actually want to perform. So for example, recently, I've been working a lot on my quiet playing. I was finding in performance, I wasn't really able to access playing quietly with a great sound, great articulation. So I realized I just needed to take this into the practice room and work on it and suck on it for a second. And then it would improve in my performance. So recently I've been taking nothing but blues playing super clear blues ideas at a very quiet dynamic while focusing on time, articulation and sound. <laughs> I'll take that and practice that for five or 10 minutes, just chorus after chorus. That is practice. That is not performance. I would never do that in a performance where I was so limited. That would actually probably not lead me in a direction that I liked the way I sounded. It wouldn't help me connect with the audience, wouldn't necessarily help me connect with the other musicians on stage. So once I'm feeling good, I'll say, all right, let's see if I can do this in a more realistic way. So then I might hit record on my phone because I know I'm going to listen back and make it kind of like that performance moment. And then I'm going to give myself the proviso. I have to have some sort of quiet playing in the next couple of choruses that I play. It has to be an element of what I play, but I can actually play whatever I want.
In my experience, at least for my own playing, this sort of dynamic really helps me access my best stuff when I really need it. When I'm going to perform with people, I don't want to be thinking about all the stuff I practice. I don't want to be thinking about the scales, the licks, the harmonic concepts. I want to be thinking about listening to my fellow band members. I want to think about connecting to the audience. I want to think about hearing my sound connected with the melodies that are floating around in my head and letting it happen naturally rather than being in that mindset of like, oh, there's a 251 coming up. I got to get this lick in there that I've been working on for the past two weeks. That almost never ends well. And even if you do land the lick, a lot of times it feels sort of forced. So take this stuff, see what you can do with it. I think it will help you to find a better relationship and a better connection between practice and performance. Other than that, we'll see in the woodshed.